Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand how we can deploy a trained convolutional neural network on Azure. In my previous video, I have explained you how we can build an image classifier with convolutional neural network for plant disease classification where we can classify the leaves of plants into different diseases. So we will be taking that trained neural network and we can see how we can deploy this as an endpoint on Azure. So that will be the agenda of today's video and let's get started. So before getting into the coding part, I just wanted to quickly tell you about uh, the different resources that we will be using on Azure. So the first thing that we will be creating is a Azure resource group and within this resource group, we will be creating the other resources that we need. So uh, after this, we'll be creating something called as uh, Azure machine learning workspace and on this, we'll be hosting our endpoints and so on. So the first step will be to uh, go to your Azure portal and create this resource group. Later within this resource group on a specific location, we would create another Azure machine learning workspace. So once these things are done on the portal, so we will come back to Python and we will use Azure's AI ML uh, SDK version 2 in order to kind of create these endpoints, deploy this and so on. So uh, while, uh, you know, in order to do this, we also need to uh, ensure that we have the proper environment and the required libraries in order to run this uh, or in order to kind of predict from this neural network. So we will set up the Conda environment within this uh, workspace for this online endpoint uh, to work. And later we can kind of create and deploy this Azure online endpoint that can be used for real time inferencing where you can basically send an image to this uh, endpoint and get a prediction out of this on what particular plant diseases. So this this is the process that we will follow and now let's get into the coding part. I have created a repository in github. Uh, I'll give the link of this repository in this video description. You can fork it and you can like refer this in order to do this thing. Right. And uh, this uh, notebook to deploy CNN. Right. So this folder contains all the required files that we need in order to uh, build this endpoint and deploy this neural network. So we basically will be working on uh, Jupyter notebook. If you want, you can also kind of run this in a script so that you can kind of automate this for any models. And it's just not for deep learning. You can even use this uh, in order to deploy machine learning models as endpoints as well. So these are all the files that we need. So in the coding uh, part, let's uh, kind of go through each of the, these files and see like what's the you know importance of each of this. So in order to deploy this, you need two main uh, libraries. One is Azure AIML and Azure Identity. So this Azure Identity is used in order to authenticate, uh, you know, our credentials so that we can access uh, Azure resources programmatically from Python. So we have this Azure Identity and this Azure AIML is this uh, software development kit, which is the version two of this. So before this, we had like Azure Core ML, but that's like kind of a older library. So this is the updated one and we will be using this. So make sure that uh, you install these libraries so i've installed this already so you can see like all the other libraries this would installed along with this so you can do that as the first step next is importing the dependencies so here i'm importing standard libraries like os in order to access some files access the directories and so on and i have this json file in order to access a specific configuration file which uh, let's discuss a bit later and then i have this date time uh, so i kind of need to build this endpoint with a unique name and in order to get this unique name to this endpoint name, we will add a date time to it so that that endpoint can be unique. So that's the purpose of this library. And then we have this ML client from Azure AI ML. So this is like the gateway for us in order to access these uh, resources that we create on Azure. So this is something that we'll be using predominantly in this uh, use case. And then from Azure AI ML dot entities, we are importing managed online endpoint. So this is the uh, managed online endpoint on which we'll be deploying our uh, neural network. And then we have this managed online deployment. So we will take this endpoint and we will like kind of do some deployment on this so that we have this endpoint ready. And then we have this model class, which is basically used to push our model to the registries or the environment that you have for your endpoint. And then this is the environment where we will say that I want this particular conda environment or, you know, I want this version of Python and this version of TensorFlow and other libraries. So, and then you have this code configuration. So this is configuring some of the code files that uh, you have and it's basically the code that it needs in order to give the inference. Inference is nothing but the predictions that you are going to call. In this case, once we have deployed it, 
uh, we will pass an image uh, basically a processed image and get a prediction out of this right and for this we need a script called as scoring script and in this code configuration we say like what's that particular setting is and all those uh, details will be uh, present here and then we have this Azure identity and from this we are kind of importing this default Azure credential which is again used to uh, kind of link our Azure account uh, to this particular Python environment and basically it's to authenticate our uh, you know environment to the Azure account that we have. So these are all the required dependencies so I'll run this one next step is configuring uh, the resource details so again now we are working in a different environment now we need to tell python or kind of uh, configure this environment in such a way that this is my azure account and i want you to connect to this account so for that we have this config.json file where i've created a key value pair of subscription id resource group workspace and location so uh, this is right so i have my file over here config.json but again this as like the credentials of my account so the main thing that you need is the subscription id so that uh, in order to get that subscription id you need to go to your azure uh, portal so i hope that by this point you have your azure account and this deployment didn't cost me that much it costed me like 10 20 indian rupees which is like even way less than like one dollar uh, usd so it shouldn't cost you much but the instance that we are going to uh, kind of run right it's like uh, paid by the number of hours we are using so you need to keep a close watch on that to make sure that you are not incurring like a lot of cost so we will be using a gpu instance and that will be costing around like 50 60 rupees per hour so make sure that uh, you know you are not exceeding your budget that you are having so that's another main thing and the first thing that we need is the subscription id in order to get uh, get the subscription id you will see the subscription uh, in this navigate tab or you can search for subscription and i'm working on a pay as you go subscription so once you click this right uh, there will be a column called a subscription id so it's like a alphanumerical combination so you can copy that and paste it in the config.json file and again if you are working in an organization they probably will be having several subscription and they will probably like assign you a particular subscription so you need to get that uh, id from there and i have also given the template for this config file this config.json so don't change anything uh, in this place so you have the subscription id resource group workspace name location and so on right so this is the same but i think here i have this workspace but in this code it's workspace name so i'll correct these things but basically uh, just replace your subscription id here your resource group name workspace name location so remember that we haven't created our resource group and workspace yet so that we'll be doing in uh, portal only okay so this is the next step so the first thing is uh, make sure that you have this notebook or you cop basically copy and paste the code and kind of run these cells one by one and make sure that you replace all the values over here so i'm basically loading this json file into a dictionary called as config.data so when you do this json.load so it will open this json file and load this to the python dictionary and we are assigning it to the variable called as config data later from this config data we are getting the subscription id resource group workspace and location so i'll run this so this is the name that i'm going to uh, give to my resource group deploy plant this is cnn rg so i've added this rg for resource group and ws for workspace and for workspace we have deploy uh, plant there is a typo but that's okay i'll just go ahead with this particular name and then the location is going to be west us so these are the names so with these names we are going to create our resource group and workspace on azure uh, there is actually an alternative way to do this so instead of going to the azure portal and doing this right you can also try and create the resource group and workspace from python itself so for that i think you may not be able to do that with azure aiml directory you should be able to do this with azure management uh, sdk that's available so with that you can basically give your tenant id and possibly your subscription id and create those resource group from here as well which is like a more standard way but i'll leave that to you as an exercise so for now i'll copy this uh, resource group name and also there is a reason why i'm trying kind of choosing this west us i'll tell you that a bit later so come to your uh, uh, microsoft azure thing and you have this resource group navigate right you can go here or you can give this create a resource or type like resource group and you will like kind of uh, it will basically take you to this page and here you can do this uh, create uh, task 
and here i have selected my pay as you go subscription so you can probably work on free tier i'm not sure the instance gp instant is available in the free tier but you can pro probably like if you're uh, okay with spending like a few rupees you can uh, go for a pay as you go subscription as well we need to give a unique name here and my resource group name is uh, deploy plan this is cnn rg and it says the green tick basically says that there are like no other resource group and basically your naming convention is proper so it says that and in the region i'm going to use west us the reason i'm going with west us is we will be kind of using a virtual machine kind of uh, instance and for that we'll be using like a gpu instance and uh, that gpu instance there is like a service limit quota for each subscription account and for my account right i have this uh, only in west us and the west europe uh, otherwise i would have gone with like central india or other uh, indian regions but yeah west us is the one because that's what's present in my quota so i'll also show you how you can check this in your subscription quota so once you have selected the region and this uh, resource group name right I'll give this next of tags and i'll give this uh, you don't have to put anything on the text if you want like you can definitely give it's like useful but i'm not going to do those additional steps so my validation is passed now i can say create so this will create my resource group with the name that i have given which is this uh, deploy plan this is cnn rg so you can click this and kind of see your uh, subscription id and other resource that you create within this so the next step is creating a workspace workspace is nothing but uh, your azure machine learning workspace and uh, that machine learning workspace will be created within this resource group so you can either click this uh, resource group name create it from there or you can again come back to this home page and you can basically search azure machine learning so this is the sorry this is the symbol for it so click this Azure machine learning. So we'll be creating a workspace and all the deployments that we do will be kind of linked to this. So here you can do this create and new workspace for your ML projects. Now I'll copy the name. Hmm. So here we need to choose the resource group. So subscription has already been selected. So if your account has like multiple subscription, you can choose the appropriate one. You can either create one new year or i'm just going with the one that uh, i have just now created right so this is the one and i need to give a name and the name i have already copied and region i'm going to give it as uh, west us right so this is again you can have resource group in a different location uh, but again make sure that you are creating the region in the workspace that has that quota in order to create the gpu in instance so you can have this kind of storage account is basically where your model will be stored and you have a key vault where if you want you can create your keys and save it here application insights and so on container registry we don't need it so we'll be creating like a different conda environment for this for this again networking all those things you can just leave it as such with the default thing if you want like a private connection you can opt for this but i just want to build a public endpoint that anyone can access with the key so i'll just go with this one encryption all this can be just like the default values and finally i can go to this review plus create where the validation will be happening and then uh, this create tab will be enabled so my validation has passed now i can create this workspace so creating this workspace it can take like two or three minutes so all these application insights key vault and storage accounts should be created so you kind of need to wait until this process is done uh, before like running the other cells because uh, we are kind of accessing this workspace and resource group and all that and we want this to be completed so that's the idea so you can see the subscription resource group name and so on and then these are the things that are kind of uh, getting uh, deployed now so we have the storage account application insight so we have the log analytics key walls and so on so this is being deployed so we can wait for this to be completed and we can probably uh, go through the code once so uh, the next step is creating the resource group and workspace again this is the let's say the assignment that i'm giving you so you can try doing this on python so the other uh, interesting thing about doing this deployment in python is right so you don't have to change this code uh, you can probably like let's say in the configuration file that i've shown you right so here you can also have the name of the uh, endpoint that you want to create or the instance you want to provision so all these things can go here and you can also name your model so each time you want to deploy your model you can just change this configuration file so that you don't have to do all those coding again so that your uh, work is kind of like automated and, and you can basically do this for like other model that you are deploying so that's the idea for having this configuration file so maybe try this once 
uh, I mean, in the same way, create it with portal, the resource group and workspace and all those things and do this. And once you are clear with these steps, right, then see how you can create the resource group and workspace from Python SDK itself. So that's the thing. If to complete. Okay, so terminal provisioning state failed. I think this is uh, creating me an issue because I may have reached uh, the quota limit. So probably what I'll do is I can delete this and choose uh, West Europe as my uh, location so that that can give me access to the machine that I want. Oh, I think there is a conflict with the name. Okay. So what I'll do is I can go to this resource group and I can kind of delete this resource group in order to delete the workspace and all these things. So here in that case, what I can do is I can rename this uh, resource group and the workspace name as something like this is equal to something and my workspace is going to be a different name region yeah i can think i can try it with west us itself so let's call this as west us and resource group i name this as plant this cnn deploy test rg so i'll just copy this and use as my workspace name as well Right, so let's run this. Hmm. So this is a new name that I'm going to use in order to create. So my resource group is getting deleted. So now I'll come back here. And uh, I'll create this resource group with the new name that I have and even I can choose West Europe hmm. so West Europe review plus create and my validation is done and the next step is creating my uh, workspace so for that I'll be using this name but location I think you can also change this to West Europe. So make sure that this thing is same or not sure if you need to put an iPhone, but in the code, we don't need this region. But if you're creating the resource group and workspace in the code, you need this region. So make sure that that's proper. Oh, sorry, this has to be location. Okay, so now let's copy this workspace name and create a workspace with this Azure machine learning. New workspace resource group would be this and this is the name of my workspace and my region would be West Europe and I can give review plus create yeah so let's see if this is kind of uh, working or if it's working right so it can be two reasons one is it can be the conflict of the workspace name because I have used like the same name before. The other reason can be I may have reached the limit on the West US region. So that can be the other region. So you can also take note of this so that if you face this issue later, you know like why this is happening. So all these should get completed and we should get a message saying that the deployment is completed. So let's uh, go to that later. Yeah. So next thing is that. So uh, you can either create this from the portal or you can create these resource group and workspace from the Python SDK. So once this has been done, right, so we'll be creating an instance of this YAML client that we have seen, which we have importing from Azure AI YAML YAML client, which will be used like a gateway in order to handle our workspace, deploy our endpoint and so on. So within this YAML client, we need to pass this default Azure credential this is basically used to authenticate you and then we have the subscription ID resource group and workspace so we are passing this and also I forgot to mention make sure that you have installed Azure CLI in your terminal so that like if you want to run some CLI commands you can run it on your terminal that's other thing so if this uh, workspace is completed right we can go ahead and uh, run this ML client thing and the next step is uh, giving an endpoint 
for uh, your model so here i have this variable called as endpoint name and i'm calling this as uh, endpt endpoint plan this is with some abbreviations and date time so i'm getting this particular uh, you know moment of time and i'm getting this uh, date month hour minute and so on so again this is because you need to have a unique name for your endpoint in a region and for that i'm going with this particular date time and then we are creating this manage uh, managed online endpoint which is we have imported from here so this is what we are creating and uh, we are giving a description for this is not like used but this is just for us to uh, you know if you open this endpoint you will see this description there so you have this name parameter where we are passing this endpoint name so your endpoint will be created with this name and we have a description and we have this authentication mode so you can you know you have this option to authenticate it with a key and the other authentication way is to use this aml token so it's like you can get a token for this endpoint and let's say the client of this api need to pass uh, the processed image along with this uh, AML token in order to access this. So this is just for like security reasons or just to make sure that only the people that you want are accessing your APIs. So that's the purpose of this. And uh, let's see if it's created. Yeah, so you can see your deployment is complete. So this worked in the West Europe region and then i'll go to my home so this has created my workspace as well so if you want you can kind of go to this uh you know uh, workspace you can click it and see like the other details of it the keys and so on and if you again you can go to this resource group from from there you can go to this workspace and all those things so that's the other thing so if you want to understand more about this like just go ahead and just give a look into that so that's other thing so our workspace is created now i can run this so we are passing our azure credential subscription id resource group and our workspace name here so i'll run this this is the updated names that we have given over here okay and then uh, you have this aml token so this will uh, try to build this managed endpoint token and now i'll print the endpoint name so you can see this is like uh, the date time basically the timestamp for my uh, endpoint name so this is the name that on which the model will be deployed so the next step is we need to set up the environment for our model to run so it's basically a tensorflow model so i have also given the notebook i think in order to build this uh, neural network so probably i'll add that to this uh, notebook as well so there you can see like how to basically like train this model get the data set and so on so i'll add this in the github repo i'll also give the link for that video in this video description you can watch this if you want to understand like how this model building uh, kind of how we did it like or if you want you can deploy your own model as well so that's also fine so this model is a tensorflow model and we need a python environment and the appropriate uh, tensorflow and other libraries installed right so you can either kind of uh, build a docker file to have a docker image uh, container is it basically to have that environment or you can build a conda environment so that's what i'm doing so the first step is giving the models path so this also we have imported from uh, azure.aml model so here i'm giving the path parameter the path of my model so this is the notebook that i'm working on and in that same directory i have a folder called as trained underscore model and in this i have this plant disease prediction underscore model dot h5 which is my trained model that is of size of almost 547 megabytes and uh, i'm mentioning the path of this model trained model and this is the name of the model and this is where i'm mentioning the environment so here uh, i'm creating this environment instance and saying that i'm passing this conda dot uh, yaml file uh, to this conda file and i'm mentioning a image so this is like one of the standard images that i have i mean this is like not from me but this this is from this microsoft thing right so there are like some standard images that you can use which acts as your base image on which your conda dependencies will be installed so you can also basically uh, use like different images that are appropriate for your tensorflow or if you're working with pytorch you can also kind of go with this image but here i'm just going with the standard image of this mcr uh, the container registry microsoft thing uh, open mpa this ubuntu uh, image and then mentioning this conda.yaml file so in, let's open this conda.yaml which contain basically your python versions and your uh, library versions and so on so you have this name you can again uh, go with the same name probably and you i mean you don't have to change any other things so if you want to have like a different python version go with that so let's say 3.9 or something else and mention pip so first it needs to get pip for the conda and then for installing these libraries with pip install we are mentioning that pip and numpy this version tensorflow yes, azure aml azure aml in uh, infra 
inference over HTTP. So these are like kind of uh, default things that the inference uh, endpoint needs. So you need to mention this and below we are kind of using it in order to process our image a bit in our uh, inference script. So these are the things. Uh, your model may require like some other libraries and additional libraries as well. So you can actually like include that along with the version as well. So that's about this conda.yaml. So when I kind of pass this here, right? So all these dependencies of Python and other libraries will be installed here. I'll close this one and then uh, we have this managed online deployment maybe i'll uh, run the few cells because this is going to take some time so i'll run these three cells let's come back okay so let's understand this one so we have this blue deployment so we have something called as this blue green uh, uh, deployment and this is basically used when you don't want to uh, kind of have downtime for your uh, kind of application so that like uh, you have like multiple uh, instances of the model or multiple versions of the model let's say the blue deployment has uh, one version of the model it can be the development environment and there is like another green uh, deployment that's let's say that's the production environment right so you just want to maintain this version or the other use case can be uh, you don't want your application to be down so you just have like another uh, deployment just for uh, safety or you can also basically like split your traffic into 50 percentage and 50 percentage and you can pass these two different uh, deployments that you have basically the different versions of the model that you have so here i'm creating this blue deployment passing this name as blue and the endpoint name is the one that we have created model is uh, this model we have loaded with this uh, model from azure aml and we are passing the environment code configuration so this is another important thing so con code configuration we are passing this code configuration uh, class that we have imported here and within that we are passing two things one is the code that uh, and here i'm passing a parameter called this online scoring and scoring script is code.py so this online scoring is basically the folder on which my scoring script is present you can see again it should be in the same directory as your notebook so online scoring you can have any name but these this is like the standard name uh, that's used while deploying the uh, models on azure so you can have this name or a different name but I would suggest you to go with the same name so i have a folder and within that i have this score.py file so that's what we are mentioning here so code is online scoring uh, and then scoring script is score.py so when you're deploying a model you may also need like some other files uh that kind of the inference script needs in my case right i need this class indices that basically contains uh, the prediction index as well as like the corresponding uh, name of the class so here the name of the class is apple apple scab and then apple black dot and so on but the model prediction right would give you a one not encoded array and from that we will do an np.argmax and get this index value 0 to all the way up to 37 because it contains like 38 classes so this index value is what you will get and you know basically in order to get this names we uh, have this class indices dot json so in your case you may need like some other file that the you know inference script need along with the model file so you can put that particular file uh, in this online scoring thing along with this score.py and the score.py is the inference script that kind of loads the model and does the prediction uh, we will also go through this uh, now so you are basically passing and then passing an instance type so this is like another important thing so this is the type of uh, endpoint instance that i'm creating and instance count is one so the other advantage is that you can kind of scale these uh, endpoint instances so that let's say your traffic is so huge that you can't uh, kind of maintain it with uh, one instance you can kind of give like a maximum instance count so that when a traffic has reached let's say the 70 percent we can configure it in such a way that when 70 percent is reached it will provision like let's say another instance or another two other instances and so on so that the scaling can happen you can either do this horizontal scaling or vertical scaling where you increase the you know basically the memory and the cpu capacity of uh, your instance so that's other thing so here i'm going with this standard nc4 as t4 v3 uh, this is like a gpu instance so in order to if you want to see like what are all the other instances that's present you can go to this link which is a vm sku list 
so just click this link and you will see this so we have the relative size so these are like extra small uh, skus or the instance time we have a general purpose compute optimized memory optimized and the gpu so here we are working with a neural network and probably you will also be working with like a large neural network probably so you can deploy that on your gpu instance or even try this with some standard small scale uh, machines without gpu so these machines will probably have like lesser costing and the gpu machines and memory optimized will be like having like higher cost so you need to kind of look into those things as well so the advantage with running the cloud is that right uh, we can't uh, provision or we can't kind of buy a machine that has like let's say 700 uh, 700 giga byte of uh, ram and and like a very large cpu and so on so this cloud enables us to kind of rent these instances and run it so that if we want to run a large model or deploy it we can do that and the other advantage it advantage is that you don't actually have to deploy the model you can train the model on azure as well as uh, deploy the model on azure as well so that's also possible probably i'll make a video at a later point about this how you can train this so that's about it so here i'm going with this uh the lowest gpu instance which is the standard nc4as thing you can also go through some of the other uh, sizes other instances and kind of build it so i'll copy this and i'll paste it uh, on google so you will see this azure vm comparison this is like a good tool to see like what's the architecture and what's basically the specification of the instance that you're creating so you can see we have like four vcpus the architecture the memory which is like pretty huge for our model which is just 500 mb so we have one gpu so you, you would also have multi gpu machines so if you are like building a large model or if you're working with like llms you probably would be kind of doing this in a distributed way with multiple gpu so that's important there and you have like other specifications and uh, region you can set it up so price by regions so you have this pay as you go thing i have this standard uh, instance this is the per hour uh, cost and maybe i'll put this on indian rupees first so you can see per hour this is going to cost like so we have this uh, regions right so you can see based on the regions it's like kind of uh, differs so if you have used like let's say west us 2 or something it's going to be like 40 rupees per hour so this can change but again this may be like older uh, pricing so make sure that you also look at azure's pricing as well so this shouldn't cost much but yeah be careful whenever you are like kind of uh, provisioning this so that you don't kind of uh incur like a large cost and make sure that you are cleaning up and deleting all the resources that you have created so that uh, no costing is kind of like incurred from you just for like having those uh, services running so that's another very very important thing so here i'm going with this uh standard uh, nc4 thing so you can see the gpu details probably i'll also maybe copy this small thing and i'll paste this one here the general purpose instance You can also check the price in uh, US dollars if that's what you're going to pay. So here you can see we don't have any GPUs here. Uh, the memory is 14 gigabytes and other details. You can try deploying the neural network on this, but again, you have to check whether uh, that machine is like large enough to host your model. So if you see this, this is like slightly lower per hour cost and so on. And the other thing that I told you, right, uh, you need to check if, you're, if you have the quota to provision this particular machine. So for that, you need to go to uh, basically your portal and search a quota. So this will take you to your subscription page and uh, here you go for machine learning. And here your subscription will be chosen, which is a pay as you go subscription. And here you, you're seeing this, right? So standard N, NC, AVS, S3, T4 family. I think this is the one that we are using. So you have zero of dual cores probably. So if you want, you can request like a larger uh, quota if you kind of let's say you are running two models and it's not like sufficient for you so this is the west europe thing so i, I think i also have this in the west us right so that's why i'm choosing these regions so in my particular subscription account in central india i didn't have these quotas not sure if it's available on indian servers but you can check that as well so you need to check this and make sure that uh, uh, you know so these machines are available to you so that's one thing so make sure that again you have this required quota uh, yeah i think that is about it so let's come back here hmm, right so this is about it so let's just go through this again so first we have given the model path and then we have this environment uh 
file thing so we are we are, we are giving this conda.yaml and this uh, image of this uh, you know environment that we are creating and then we are creating this managed online deployment for our managed online endpoint and we are naming this as blue endpoint and endpoint name model environment and code configuration all these we are mentioning and the instance type is standard nc 4 ast 4 v3 which we have seen and i have like one instance count so i don't want to incur like a large cost so that's about it the next step is creating this endpoint so we are creating a variable called as create endpoint which is equal to this ml client that we have already loaded dot online endpoints dot begin create or update so this will basically if there are no endpoints with this name it will update it sorry it will create it if something is already there you can update it with this same function so we are passing this endpoint so this endpoint is nothing but so this is the one so we have the endpoint name and we have created uh, an online endpoint with this managed online endpoint and that's what we are passing this and then we have this result right so this is like another uh, interesting thing you can run this without this result you can just uh, run this until this point so in that case it will work as a asynchronous process so uh, your creation of endpoint takes some time so here you can see it took around like one minute of time right but this would say that the code has already kind of executed and you can run the next cell but what would happen is this uh, endpoint would be creating in the back end so if you run the next line uh, which is to deploy this endpoint it will throw you an error saying that that endpoint is not kind of uh, still created right but this code would have executed so that's why we have this result thing where this makes this process synchronous so this code cell execution stops only after the endpoint has been created so it's better to kind of do this dot result thing if not again in this case as well right we are using this if you don't do this this will say that the code has executed but still the resources are getting provisioned it's still creating in the back end so it's good to have this result thing and you can kind of print and see this create endpoint thing so it will show you the endpoint details what's the key authentication key it's using uh, the subscription id all those things so you can print and see this create endpoint thing and the next step is deploying the endpoint so we have this deploy endpoint ml client online deployments dot begin or create blue deployment is the variable that we have created for this managed online endpoint and then and then again we have this dot result thing so here you can see uh, this is uploading the online scoring folder to our environment which has my class indices and the score.py inference script and then it's uploading my trained model uh, planned disease prediction model dot that's fine so these things will be uploaded in this step and uh, this is directly we are creating this on azure if you want you can also uh, deploy this first on your local to make sure that there are no issues in your uh, inference script or in your code so you, for that you can just you know you can just add another parameter within this uh, begin or create and say local is equal to true but uh, you need to have docker engine running on your system in order to do this so if not it will throw an error so if you want to kind of test this first you can again go with this local deployment check this first and then go with uh you know creating an endpoint on azure so that we can basically make sure that we are not spending a lot of time deploying this and then realizing that there is some error in the script so because the problem is this deployment would take like about 14 15 minutes so once we have done this deployment when we kind of pass something or there is some error right it's going to say that something is wrong in the environment some library is not installed or the script is wrong so if you don't want to do that or if you don't want to go through that you can deploy that on local first and make sure that everything is okay so that's another thing that i wanted to quickly tell you about so you can see the uh, model being uploaded and the instance basically the endpoint being deployed so let's wait for this to be completed okay so this yeah. so the deployment took about 18 minutes to complete so again you can print this uh, create endpoint and deploy endpoint in order to see like the details of this or again you can come back to this uh, azure portal refresh it and you will see this endpoint details and the blue deployment that you have done uh, if you are not finding this you can kind of go to this navigation bar go to all resources and you will again see this uh, endpoint so this endpt is this is the endpoint that we built and this is like the deployment that we did so you can again click this and see like what's the scoring uri that you have to use and other details so that's how you can deploy this 
and the next step what i'm doing is uh, you we are kind of assigning the traffic to this blue deployment so let's say that you have two deployments blue and green and you want to send 70 percentage of your traffic to blue uh, deployment and 30 percentage to green and something like that right so those traffic uh, details can be added like this so in point dot traffic so i'm calling this blue under it so here we are assigning like all this 100 percent traffic to blue as we don't have some other deployments and saying that add traffic is equal to ml client online in points same function begin create or update as this has been already created so uh, we are just using this begin create again so in point dot result so this will again make this as a synchronous process only uh, this process has completed right so this cell would have like completed the execution and then next step is you can kind of uh, get this endpoint from ml client online endpoint name is equal to endpoint so uh, until this step all the deployments are done now we are passing this name of this endpoint and getting this endpoint so that we can use in order to predict it so i'm creating let's say consider this as like a fresh variable and using this ml client dot online endpoints dot get name is equal to endpoint so this endpoint name is basically what we have created previously so we are passing this and this will return you if some endpoints has been created with this name so the traffic has also had been done so here we are kind of printing the endpoint traffic as well as the endpoint scoring URI, which is the URI that we'll be using in order to predict uh, the class of the image so i'll run this so this will print that the blue as 100 percentage of traffic and this is the URI that you need to use so you can click this so this will probably give you an error um, because like you need to kind of like pass the authentication token as well as your processed image to it right so the next step is uh, understanding how we can kind of call this endpoint and get a prediction out of this and before doing that we need to understand our score.py file so most of the things are common in this score.py file but based on your model right you need to change few things because let's say in my case i have this class indices and uh, uh, you know i have this class indices and all these things right so let's say that you are working with the pytorch model so based on that you need to change your prediction and so on so i'm importing all the required uh, libraries so this file basically runs on our endpoint so this is like the prediction code that runs on the endpoint so I'm importing this OS, JSON, Base64, NumPy, TensorFlow and all these required libraries. And then we have like uh, the function called as init function. So this is like a really important one where we are, we are declaring the global variable. Uh, uh, you know, we are basically declaring model and class indices as global variable so that we can use those things later. And the other main function is run. Uh, make sure that you are uh, using the same name run for this function so each time your endpoint is called right so this run function will run and uh, the code will be executed so in this run what we are basically doing is get we are getting this data and how we are processing this data is our image will be uh, loaded as uh, basically in a binary format so if you see this uh, i have this image in my home directory which is his uh, test apple black rod jpg so i'm reading this image in a binary format uh, in this variable called as image data and then converting this to base 64 string so this is really helpful when we want to kind of pass this data as a json format and it's better if we are kind of sending the data in a json format and that's like the best way to send it to the endpoint as like a json payload so we are kind of uh, kind of changing this to the base 64 string with this particular line of code and then we are creating a json object out of this json request is equal to json dot dumps and we are creating a, a key called as data and putting the uh, image as a base 64 string it's basically like some sort of image processing so let's say the main purpose of doing this deployment is right so you have like a user interface a front end uh, you know that's created from like some other javascript or some other tool and they can basically use this uh, api this particular endpoint in order to get the prediction so they would probably like do a similar uh, data processing or again however they are doing right you can kind of build the code in such a way that our code handles that particular data processing so here this is the processing that we do where it's basically a json data that has a key called as data and the image data as base 64 string and we are saving this as sample request dot json and then we will post this uh, json to the endpoint and get a prediction from this so i'm uh, opening a file writing it and basically creating this file sample request and putting this here and then we are calling this so uh, the first thing that we need to understand is how your data is going to be passed 
you come back here so we are calling this uh, i mean we are not explicitly calling but when your runtime when your endpoint is called this run function will be called and this run functions contain raw data which is the json data that you are uh, passing with the sample request.json and uh, within that we are using this json.loads which basically converts your uh, json object to a dictionary and we are converting that and we are just taking the data value so which is basically your image uh, base 64 string so we are getting that and then doing this encoding thing so that we can convert this back to uh, bytes right and then we are calling this predict image class function now we can go to this particular function where we have like all the required things so now we have this image data as bytes and we are calling this load and pre-process image so again i'm going to this particular function where we are reading this uh, bytes and then again converting it to a proper pillow object so that's why we have imported this pillow image we have imported again all the required libraries so we are converting it to a pillow object resizing this to 224 comma 224 because that's the size on which our model has trained converting to numpy array expand dimension so all these things i have explained to you in the previous video where we have built this neural network but again this may not be common for all the networks neural networks that you are deploying so this would probably change depending on the model that you have built and depending upon the data that the model expects right so these are the things that my model needs so i have this predict image class which again calls this uh, data image pre-processing function then i kind of predict it so once this has done all the data pre-processing and i've also done a normalization because my model has been trained on normalized images where the pixel values are between zero and one right and um, once this processing is done i'm sending this numpy array back and now this we now we pass this to model dot predict processed image and then we get this np dot argmax to get the uh, basically the label as like an integer then we put this uh, to the class indices and getting this out of this so that's what is presented in the online scoring we are passing this index and getting the class name so the final uh, result that you would get is basically the predicted class name and that class name is what we have over here so first the run function will be called and this run function will call this predict image class function in return which will again call this load pre-process image function and all the pre-processing and the prediction will be done once the prediction is done right we are storing this in the variable called as predicted class name and uh, even that we are kind of dumping it as a json object and returning basically a json object to the endpoint so when a user process uh, an image save this to a json and call this endpoint it will again give you uh, a json as response will, which would be looking like this so maybe i'll run this and show you how the response would be looking like so this does the data processing and now you have this predicted class name apple black rot which is the black rot image that we have in our local right so i've added this in the repository as well so you have this black rot image right so this is how this works so now you can see that it has some indentation so in order to kind of correct this you can do this json.loads uh, to kind of again convert this json to a dictionary where we have this proper format so this predicted class name and this class name uh, kind of comes from this uh, json dot this the one that we did over here so if there are any errors right in the script so it will return the error over here so this is how this works and in the init uh, function we are loading our uh, or basically we are declaring our model as global variable and in this model path we are calling this os path dot join os dot get env assure model directory so this is like the default directory that will be created when you deploy a model as an online endpoint so this is where our model will be saved this is the name of the model that we have given right uh, this is yeah the model file and that we have to mention here so basically from this directory in the assure endpoints environment it loads this model Model to this uh, basically the path to this model path and that we are loading this from tensorflow's tfkeras.model.load as this is a tensorflow model for pytorch you probably need to change these things and class indices as i said we already said that online scoring is the folder that contains my code right so here we said that code is equal to online scoring and all these are kind of uh, uploaded here so uploading online scoring so this would have already uploaded my class indices file that's present in this online scoring folder so i'm accessing it from the same uh, directory so you can see that here so we have this class indices.json open this and yeah load this thing here so a model will be stored in this assured model directory but this is present in the online scoring same as this code.py so you can just kind of load it directly and all this uh, data pre-processing and, and prediction kind of happens right so this is how that will this will be working if again there are any issues in your functions right so that would be kind of returned when you call this uh, 
basically this uh, prediction but there is also a chance that if something is wrong with your environment or let's say that you have this conda yaml file right so let's say that you haven't imported some libraries in that case what would happen let's say that you don't have the pillow but your score.py uses pillow library right if you don't mention this your deployment will break and you will get a error in this step but it will just say that the container has terminated it won't say what that error is so for that you need to run the logging script which i have given in the end so ml client dot online deployment dot get logs lines 50 name blue and so on if you run this it, this will give you like the latest uh, basically the logs and so on there you can see like what that error is if you know some library is missing or there is like you know let's say an indentation error in your script something is wrong within the script or basically your environment so those things you can figure out from the logs uh, uh, basically getting the logs function so this is how you can get a prediction out of this so yeah so here we have loaded this image maybe i'll turn this again and got a prediction out of this but again so this is okay uh here we are not passing any uh authentication token because this is like the same environment so our azure uh, credentials has been already authenticated but let's say that we want to use this from a remote place from a different environment right in that case we need to pass a aml token so it's like the authentication token that we need to use along with the scoring uri that we got over here right so you can also find this scoring uri by going to this endpoint so you will find this scoring uri and other details so you can get it from here or you can print it uh, over here and let's say again if, if uh, you are working in a team and there is like a separate uh, front end team and they are using a different tool you can give your uh, scoring uri along with the authentication token and you can tell them like how the data has to be processed so that they can take care of these processings or again if, you, if they are doing their processing in a different way of these images you can kind of let's say uh, handle that so the other way would be let's say once the user has uploaded an image or something they can save it to a storage account as a blob and they you can retrieve it from there and do the prediction so there are like different ways to do this but i mean this is the way that i am doing so yeah you can kind of decide on that the next step is getting this aml token so you should be able to get this from portal somehow but i couldn't find a proper way to do this so i kind of uh, found a workaround where you can get this aml token so go to this link that i have given over here so this will take you to this like Azure documentation and this is to get the tokens for our uh, online endpoint so we can get a valid endpoint so you you are seeing this http command right so you can run this post or you can basically give this try it thing and you need to sign in with your Azure account okay so uh, here i'll probably sign in with my Azure account right so i am signed in here i can give my endpoint details and it will give me my uh, authentication token okay so i'll continue this is my the same account that i'm using this azure so go to this link uh, and and basically uh, give this try it and paste like all this endpoint details resource group name subscription id is already selected which is pay as you go for my particular uh, id and we have the api version you don't have to change the api version here and yeah other things you can leave it as it so here i'll come back print the resource group name uh workspace name and the endpoint name these are all the three details that you need so i'll copy the resource group paste it here so you can either do this from this http request or the easier way to be doing this in this uh, field so i'll paste my resource group name make sure that you are logged in and i'll paste my workspace name next is my endpoint name should be coming here and yeah you can leave the other things as such these are like the mandatory fields and i'll call this run so this would give you a 200 response that means the request went correctly and this is your access token so i'll copy this again let me know in the comments as well if there is like a better way to do this so that i can also learn from this so here we are using a aml token uh, which we have mentioned over here while building the you know this thing in point you can also use key parameter where we'll be passing a key value to this that's other thing so now i have a python file which basically does all this same thing so processing this image as base 64 dumping it to this uh, json data and so on so here i'm going to use the scoring url and uh, the uri and the authentication token so i'll paste this token that i have copied uh, i'll paste it over here and uh, again this uh, we have printed over here right so there's uh, basically the scoring uri i'll copy this and paste it here 
this is just to demonstrate like how you can kind of call this endpoint from a different python environment or even from let's say a different uh front end tool or something and get a prediction out of this so here we have this request library base 64 and json make sure that you have installed the request library we are passing this score, uh, scoring uri and again as i said you can get this uri from this uh, endpoint that you have deployed as well now we have this aml token that we caught from this particular site now the data processing steps so i have this test apple black rod dot jpeg jpeg image and then i'm creating this headers so this is the place where you need to pass your token so i have this content type as application json you don't have to change anything just change the url and the aml token other things can remain as such so content type is application json basically telling that i'm just going to pass a json as the body for this in point call and authorization it's a bearer uh, token and you can just replace this right so this aml token will be replaced over here and now we need to uh, the main thing that we need to do is read the image as binary data process this with base 64 and then uh, put it to a json object and remember that it needs to go into a key called as data because that's what our uh, scoring uh, script kind of like request right you can see this in the run thing so it's a raw data of data so we need to use the same key and image base 64 goes here and from this request library we are calling this post api where we are posting this uh, you know json object to this json is equal to json payload which is basically the converted image and it does would contain your content type and authentication uh you know token and then once we get the response right you can do this response.json would give you a json data and this json we are converting it to a dictionary using this json dot loads and then getting a prediction from this and then we can print this thing so now this should give me my prediction which is predicted class name is equal to apple apple black rock so, so similarly you can try for different images and, and get the prediction out of this and see like how this would work so this is how you can deploy your deep learning uh, model your basically your neural network any neural network uh, basic artificial neural network or a convolutional neural network on azure and you can so, you know let's say share it with like other teams of front end and other people who might have to use it or even you can kind of use this on your streamlit app so insert how that would work is now you have a streamlit app which is just like the user interface you're not running any uh, kind of like um, heavy weight processes there you're not loading a large neural network there it's just for the user interface and all this api calls all this prediction where your model runs all these things happens on a azure instance that we have created so this is like the better deployment method okay so again this is like one of the better methods we can do you can maybe try this on aws all these things would the steps would remain the same only is that you would probably use uh, the appropriate libraries there and the service names would change few other changes but the concept of building these things would remain the same so that's about it so yeah i think before that i'll just give you a quick recap of what we have done quickly so the first thing that you need is uh make sure that you have this i have a copy of this repository and uh, replace the subscription id and uh, the resource group name workspace name location and all these details and then uh open basically yeah, the conda.aml uh, yaml file where again uh, mention all the libraries you need python version you can change it depending on your requirement depending on what your model requires and then yeah we can uh, kind of run this particular notebook make sure that you have installed these libraries and other libraries you may need and then import the required dependencies and we are getting all this data from the subscription id so make sure that you have uh, the provision or the quota to create this particular instance on on you know uh, the location that you are kind of choosing but you can again try it with a non-gpu environment and see if this is working so i've tried it with a few but it kind of crashed but you can kind of like try it so that i mean this is not like a very large model so this should be good with a cpu instance as well but you can try it so i'm not very sure about that so we have uh, given our resource group name location and all these things and then we are creating the resource group and workspace in the azure portals i have shown you again you can try it out in python just by creating these things in with python sdk and then we are uh, instantiating the xml client passing the credential subscription id all those things creating an endpoint with a unique name with a timestamp and creating a an managed online endpoint with mentioning that aml token which we got later and then we are creating or basically we are setting up the environment after like kind of like loading the model saying that this is the conda dependencies that i have and the 
you know base image for my endpoint and so on and creating like one single deployment as the blue deployment endpoint name on online scoring which basically contains my class indices file and the score.py file which i'm mentioning here on the scoring script and then you can mention the score in instance type as standard nc4 ast4 thing which has the gpu and again the instance count uh, you can go to this link to see what are all the other instances that you can create and again i would suggest you to use this instant type or load this from the configuration.json as well so that you can automate this deployment instead of changing anything so basically instead of art coding anything and then we are creating this uh, endpoint so this just took like a couple of minutes and we have seen that this would be a asynchronous process if you don't use this dot results i would suggest you to use this result with this result function thing and then we are deploying the endpoint and yeah this is the place that would take like 15 to 20 minutes so where your model is kind of uploaded and your instance is getting provisioned and so on and then you are saying that 100 percentage of traffic should go to this blue and we are printing the traffic and getting the URA and so on and the next part is understanding how we are processing the image so this kind of for in order to build this we need to understand how our scoring script has been built so similar to that or basically catering to that we need to build our uh, testing script and get a response out of this so we have also seen how we can get uh, the aml token from this place so you can do that as well and finally you can get the logs so if you want to delete the endpoint you can just do this with this uh, delete endpoint online endpoints dot begin delete and give the endpoint name so this will delete the endpoint in the portal so probably you can do that here or maybe you can go to the portal the other uh, thing that we did is like got this uri aml token pass those aml tokens and all those things got a prediction from a different environment which can be again done in a different uh, programming tool or something like that so the final step but which is like really important is making sure that you are cleaning up all the resources so you can either go to this uh, left navigation bar go to all resources select all these things and give this delete so that you are making sure that you know uh, you're not incurring any cost so i'll copy and paste this delete thing so this will delete like all the endpoints and other things also make sure that you can again come back and delete this resource group separately i'll uh, yeah open this and delete the resource group so that all the things present within your resource group will be deleted so make sure to do that if not your instance that you have created for a endpoint is going to run forever and it's going to kind of incur a large cost to you but again running this this just costed me like 10 20 indian rupees so this is again this is based on uh, cost per hour so uh, if you are kind of like using it for like a few hours it shouldn't be like a large amount or something so you can see the deletion process is in in basically it's in progress so this deletion of these resources would take like five to ten minutes so yeah you can basically wait until that point and that's how you can deploy your convolutional neural network on azure i hope that everyone is clear until this point and please try this code and try to deploy this uh, that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching